from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training Podcast. I'm going to be one of the hosts for this episode. My name is Bill. Who else is hosting? I'm Vicky. Miss Vicky. Yes. We're starting another series. Yes, we are. You know what this series, you know what we haven't done? We realized we hadn't done. What's that? We had not done a series with some of the great judges from Lemons. Hmm. Really? That's true. So coincidentally, guess who we have on? A judge from uh, Lemons. Uh, yay. Do. He is a racing driver for the Escape Velocity team. Mm-hmm. And he is also a Lemons judge. And he also makes bad decisions, which meant he said yes to coming on our podcast. So with that, welcome to the podcast, Bob Griffin. Well, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Miss Vicky saw who was coming on today, and she's like, we've already had him on. I'm like, no, no, that was Bill Griffin, not Bob Griffin. They're different. That's true. There are a few of us in Lemons, and Griffin's kind of a common name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, and you all have those uh, lion paws. It's very, very, very confusing, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway, sir, welcome to the podcast. We have not met in uh, Meat Space, but uh, we're, we're doing our best job right now. Mm-hmm. Vicky. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, welcome to the podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm really kind of out I'm of it. I'm busy opening a beer, so you know, just 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 let me know. I can answer questions. I can fill awkward silences. I can be the. Yeah. <laughs> I might need to share the doc yeah. with you, but uh, that's yeah. okay. Miss Vicky's so having a day. So, for those of a, uh, I am, I am having a day. So, um, so for those of you who. Uh, out there who are not familiar with you, uh, how about just a brief introduction? Oh, well, I'm six foot three, blue eyes, fantastic red beard. <laughs> I've been 10 years and change racing in the 24 hours of lemons. I That's a lot of 24 from, hours. Uh, <laughs> only a few 24 hour races. I, um, you know, I got in lemons when I got out of law school. Uh, through law school, I partied with a bunch of engineers, let's be honest. And we all got done with our graduate studies and went, hey, let's build a race car. This lemons thing looks dumb. And we did that. And now I am addicted. And now from time to time, they have convinced me to come help them with the madness. Um, (laughs) Married, two cute dogs, tiny bungalow in the near north side of Houston, collection of awful cars. I'm a lawyer, I'm an actual professional, license and everything. But, you know, on the weekends, I pretend like I'm much worse than I act or better. I, I, have a, I have a theory. I have a theory that grad school encourages participation in lemons because we've already proven for a very long time we can live with very little money. So why not waste some when we're finally making some? And we love, we love arguing and toiling against dumb problems. For Dumb, no reason. Small problems. For no reason. For mm-hmm. no reason. And generally, we've coped with it by breaking things and drinking a scooch too much most mm-hmm. of the time, which seems to be lemons. It's very lemony. It is very lemony. So, having done this for uh, a decade, which congratulations and my condolences all in the same sentence, um, what cars have you participated with, sir? Uh, we've been racing the same core car since 2013. It's a 1964 Dodge Dart, slant six, automatic, four door. Um, obviously, it's much different these days than it was when we first started. Mm. Our early claim to fame was one of our first drivers was Randy Popes himself. Ooh. He was also the first person to break our car, uh, except for me. I crashed it. Uh, mm. Second lap. But it, it still ran afterwards. 
Um, we're also the home to the official oldest car in Lemons, and I will die on that hill. We have the 1941 Oldsmobile. It has the original straight eight flathead, the original hydromatic, the original diff, and the original brakes. Um, that, that's model, spectacular. Right. The Model T GT is the oldest frame, but it was just kind of a 302 hot rod. And then the Buick and maybe the Tuna Chuckers, although I think the Tuna Chuckers is a 46. And then that Buick that Amanda Tully raced had a later Cadillac motor in it. So yes, the Buick. technically we're the oldest. Mm -hmm. um, so you say your team is composed of engineers and you partied with them in college. I apologize again for that because I went to many engineering parties and I went to many things that were called engineering parties. We'll leave it at that. Um, they let you keep original brakes on something? Oh, heavens yes. Really? No, yeah. The, um, yeah, no, we had, um, I think we're still running the original single circuit master cylinder, non-power, obviously, and it was four wheel drums, no self adjuster. So wow. we just sent it and we sent it for a full 24 hours and uh, that MSR motorsports ranch Houston. Mm -hmm. And obviously we won IOE. Um, we didn't even bother. There's a great YouTube video that lemons put together afterwards. One of their early lemon world videos. We didn't mm -hmm. even bother to repack the lever shocks or put in new bushings. We just left the lever shocks empty and said, ah. yeah, Oh, how hard can it be? <laughs> it circulated for a good 19 out of 24 hours. We just got mm -hmm. tired of driving it. Yeah, well, I mean, it had made it, you know, decades. It could make it another 24 hours. How hard is it? Right. And it was pretty great. It was a um, an actual $500 field fine. Really? So, yeah. And to top it off, the, the story behind that olds is great. The... Um, and I used to know the artist involved. So you see what happened was there's this German urban street artist traveling through the U.S. And he needed a couch to crash on. And this dude was going to make this wonderful 1940s hot rod art car. And if you don't know, art cars are very important in Houston. We have a large parade and festival about them every year. Mm -hmm. And he had this grand plan. So he found this German street artist who needed a place to crash. He's like, I'll, I'll leave you Rome for a whole week if you do art on my car. And the German street artist did art on the car. And then the guy had to move to New Jersey and it was for sale for $500. And we went, well, we like bad ideas. Yeah. And the art is? I would have to look it up. It's um, it's part of his, I think he called it his calligraphy series. Oh, okay. So the car itself is flat primer gray. And then he took a very large white paint marker and then kind of put some very interesting mosaic style scribbles on it. Okay. Uh, last I followed up with him, he was like actually looked up to what he was doing. He was designing part of as part of that series of uh, various clothing and purse items in Germany. Oh, very cool. He he worked. He was following us on Instagram, but the Oldsmobile has been sitting for a minute because it still has its original motor, and the rod is not so. One of the rods is not so happy. In there. <laughs> there should be backup rods in there. You'll be fine. I've got seven, but I you know, uh, cast in bearings. No, thank you. Oh, true. <laughs> true. True. So, um, on your racing uh, experiences, have you done training for your racing at all? Or just kind of hop in a car and go? Comes and goes, the training. Um, usually, usually we're more of an engineering team. We're more of a technical struggle team. And we're kind of a party team. So mm -hmm. when it comes to going fast, that's not so much our interest. Especially in a 64 Dodge Dart. That being said... Um, time and health dependent i'll go karting about once a week i do have a race sim at home we're doing road america like a lot of the crazy teams and lemons here in october so i'm going to spend some time learning that track um pay attention to the kink yeah I, I'm, I'm just gonna put on my vr headset and start nailing it now because i don't i'm not racing another race until road america in october hmm. or at least in lemons 
okay, I might great. take some cart races or an SCCA or something. Carting, not as in the old yeah, yeah. field series. Right. Yeah. Vicky, have you decided if you're doing Road America yet or are you still TBD? Still TBD. Okay. I mean, no, I don't think we're doing it. I mean, you can hate fun. You're allowed to hate fun. No one forces you to have fun in Lemons, but Road yeah. America is a special one. Fair yeah. warning. Yeah, we have uh, we have trouble with both of us getting to race anything with distance from home because we still have uh, our youngest daughter still in high school. So both mm -hmm. of us leaving is is tricky. So Why, just throw her in the back with a laptop. Yeah, I wish. Nah. I wish it was that easy. She's old enough to fight back now. So <laughs> she's got a driver's license. Have her raise road America. Uh, yep. She doesn't care. She'll do better than a stepdaughter did. Yeah, yeah we're trying. Probably. She probably will. She's uh, she's at the age where she rebels, so I'm not sure she's into the racing because her parents are into racing. So we'll we'll see if we can fight that battle at some point. But uh, mm -hmm. maybe she rebels into something useful like botany or horticulture or something right? or like history instead of wasting money on cars. Yeah. Well, we know she'll waste money. But she's got that as a core skill, so we just have to figure <laughs> out what. I'm just glad you didn't blame your spouse for it, either of you. Good job. <laughs> nope. I ought kicked my coverage long, long, long ago. Uh -huh. So, sir, mm -hmm. welcome welcome to the judging. What uh, what made you get involved with, let's go to original, because I'm assuming you, did, you were a racer before you were a judge. What made you want to get involved with Lemons? How did you uh, discover it and... And what made you make the bad choice to get involved with it? I forget who, so my partner in the team, and, and we've grown since then, but kind of the original partner in Escape Velocity Racing is my best friend, Frank. Frank is an actual aerospace engineer. And I forget if I heard about it, or he heard about it, or he, I had heard about it, and he thought it was a good idea, or vice versa. Like most great bad ideas, no one can take blame or uh, attribute it to themselves anymore. No, that's no fun. We're, it's fine. We're, we've been in it together for so long. It, it's all good. And then, um, you know, we realized that the people's curse was gone when mm -hmm. we looked into it. And oh, just for the uh, for the home game listeners, in case they aren't familiar with historic lemons, the people's curse was. Oh, you just run the vehicle over with a uh, front loader or bulldozer or hit it with a bunch of hammers or otherwise destroy one car at the end of the race for being the most annoying or least lemony. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I think, he would, uh, think that, he would die. Yeah, I think that lasted a couple years. Um, and then it was even then not always used. Uh, and then, of course, now the current thing is technically the race organizer, generally Jay Lamb can buy your car for $500. I think that's been called up twice in 10 years. I think it's twice, yeah. Yeah. And I think Why would they do that? Uh, one of them was a literal NASCAR V8 built by Holman Moody. Mm -hmm. And Jay was like, oh, if you're dumb enough to do that, I'm dumb enough to buy your whole car for $500. And their response to that was to load the car up in a trailer and never bring that car back to Lemons. Same difference. Mission oh. accomplished. Yeah, the other one was a Mercedes-Benz V12. And uh -huh. it had like a really weird title history. Maybe it involved drugs or something. Oh. I don't know. Jay Lamb just decided he needed to buy it. I think he might have been drunk or it was a joke or J Phil had convinced him it's a good idea. And the team thought it was hilarious because it was such a piece of crap. And then I think... Jay bought it and then donated it, or something. I forget what happened to that piece of crap. But it, 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 yeah, they don't they don't do it. And modernly, it's just we give you so many penalty laps, you can show up, but you ain't winning nothing. So mm -hmm. stay out of the way. Um. So, anyways, we we got together at a brewery, and. We had always worked on cars at some level, right? I started working on cars at sixteen, seventeen. Frank had a little Lotus salon. We had always kind of kept our cars running. I had done Formula Society of Automotive Engineers. So we just kind of felt the thing to do would be to build one of these cars. So we did. Um, and then, like many addictions, you're done before you even know you're done. Mm -hmm. Right. It's only $500. How bad could it be? 
Well, and we knew, right? We knew. Our first race, we, we've always been in Houston. Our first race was CMP up in South Carolina because that was the first one we could physically make. So we begged and borrowed a truck. We begged and borrowed a trailer, loaded up this awful dart, took it up there, like ate trail mix. You know, every every young first-person team sin that could have occurred, we did. Nice. Um, and we ended up winning a trophy. It's actually the one. Oh, it's on the shelf behind me somewhere. But um, that was our first trophy. So it was a lot of fun. And Randy Popes broke our car and signed it. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. he's, he's a test driver. He's going to find the weak spot. He did his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the radiator, the original copper radiator. Wow. That's fantastic. So why judge? How did you end up in the judging part of it? Available? Yoga. <laughs> the, the actual answer to that is yoga. 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 I don't so, think we'll get that answer from the other judges. I'm hoping. You probably will not. Um, last year, so I'm pretty new to judging, and it's interesting in the past decade having watched lemons continue to grow and mature and not stay stagnant. Right. You always have to worry because we all know about the SCCA. We know about Trans Am, CART, Indy. Why did these things fall off in popularity? What took them away? That's always a concern if you care about the lemons community. So Judge Phil, chief uh, Supreme Court of lemons, probably emeritus Mm -hmm. now, kind of got tired of being drug everywhere nonstop. And it got handed off to uh, Eric Rude at a level. And it's everything bagel. Huh? Everything bagel. He hates everything bagels for the record. Don't get him one. That's an awful bribe. Um, <laughs> so he he said, okay, being a judge, you don't get much money, if any. You get some expenses covered. And it's kind of a bit of emotional work, right? You have to be on your customer service representative. You're a mediator for disputes, you're a safety official, you are part of the show, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So he went, why don't we disperse this amongst all these racers we have and really infuse what it means to be in lemons in the judge's penalty box. And I suppose find people with some modicum of education or just think they're smart like Bob the lawyer. Last Mm -hmm. November. And last year we won the Copa de Bondo because we can't stop partying our brains out. And um, we can get into the dark, but suffice it to say it was broken again. And I'm dear friends with Sajiv Mehta. And Sajiv and I have um, been doing Saturday morning yoga for months before last November's race. And I didn't have much going on. The car was broken. There was no way to fix it reasonably in the paddock without driving ourselves right up a wall. So I just started hanging out with Sajeev and the penalty box got backed up and mm. I've been doing it at that point for nine years and change. So I just kind of jump in and do the same thing that happens when I show up behind the wheel and Kim Harmon's sitting there and she goes, OK, I need your number. And I go, great. Here it is. And I picked up Barber. I just got back from Hallett, which is an amazing racetrack. I'm so glad they were able to accommodate us finally. And my next race is NJMP with Sajid. So we, we will see you there, sir. Oh, I I accept. Well, you've got a good set of judges. It's going to be an interesting set of judges there. Um, Who, who's coming? You will have Sajid Mehta. Mm-hmm. You will have Eric Rude. You'll mm-hmm. have Lemons National Driving Champion Neil Losey, 2022, oh. making his judging premiere. And you'll have myself, Texas Bob. Sounds um, fantastic. If if this podcast drops before then, uh, Sajeev can be bribed with high quality liquor. Oh, we I get into this. High or low quality Irish whiskey, Japanese whiskey, or bourbon. Rude usually takes a decent bottle of bourbon. Neil doesn't really drink, but if you have good vinyl records, we mm-hmm. all like vinyl records. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Hipsters. Every mm-hmm. last one. <laughs> And not sure I, still have any. I might have some. I had uh, my father worked in radio stations, so we used to have like LP countdown on albums. Do you know what Neil Losey does for a living? No. 
He's a DJ at a radio yeah. in really? California. There you go. Yeah. That, if you want to bring a bribe, I'll knock his socks off. Something along those lines would really make an impact. You're going to have and to check. For Sajid. Mm, yeah, we know that one. We know that one. We met Sajid for the first time in person, finally, at, uh, I think it was at Pit Race. Mm -hmm. yeah, Dr. Harris as chief judge. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. So, that was the first time we met her, too. That was good. Mary, Mary's a special sort. I love her to death. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's I just kind of stumbled into it. And to be really blunt, my wife and I learned somewhat recently that we won't be able to have children despite certain medical operations. And that kind of left us a little without a keel for a minute. And I just leaned into what I know, which is lemons and auto racing and that community and those friends. And it gave me the opportunity to jump on a plane and wear a funny robe and a big gray hat and pretend like I know what I'm doing more well, than you, normal. Well, if you think about it over a weekend, you're probably getting 400 or more kids to, to have to keep track of. So it's kind of just a, you know, brunt force trauma. Right. Exactly. And it's, yeah. It's it's important because it's got a little legacy. It, it's got a little community support. I I very much have enjoyed the judging part of it so far. Sounds awesome. So How you often raced... have you done it so far? Just twice. I've just, just raced twice. enough that you know I've always chipped in, or I've always been near the penalty box, or I've you know known Phil or all those folks for years. So mm -hmm. I didn't really need much in the way of training. They just kind of said, "Yeah, you know what you're doing," which is the genius part of Rude's plan to disperse the judging duties amongst all of these veteran racers is it allows for, you know, that knowledge, right? Here's one of my favorite things. And it finally snapped when I was in the penalty uh, or clicked, I should say, when I was in the penalty box in Barber. Drivers kept coming in. I don't know why I have a black flag. I don't know why I have a black flag. I don't know why I have a black flag. You know what it is 70% of the time? Yes, we do. Pass under yellow. Mm -hmm. thing you didn't see the yellow flag that's why you don't know and and i was just sitting there going man and i went wait that's what happens to me every time i don't know why i have a black flag right <laughs> apparently that's common in that part of the united states too <laughs> every, every part of the united states if you mm -hmm. don't know just say i guess i passed a yellow <laughs> yeah Sorry. that's that's really important i know um both at Barber and Hallett, we were pretty low on contact. At Barber, we only had one naughty car that just couldn't stay away from other cars. Mm. And then... Uh, I can't promise Hallett, the same for like, New Jersey, sir. I'm sorry. Huh? I, I well, can't promise the same for New Jersey. Fair warning. That's kind of why Rude is dragging up all the Texans. That's fine. I, I am on your side. I hate body oh, work. Oh, I know, but... What happens is, because I think the Connecticut race is right before MSR Houston, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a shit show, too. Right. So every year, the Lemon Shir Circus shows up at MSR Houston, right? And, and we don't try to hit each other in Houston. We have better things to do. We let the Fox bodies go run away and crash themselves. And then all the garbage in the back is racing. And then the five BMWs are having fun at the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sajiv gets all his uh, spare Ford parts. He does. And he convinces teams to give them to him from the cars. Exactly. But um, any contact at MSR is treated like death. Mm -hmm. Mild contact. Why? Because Rude, Phil, Jay, they've all come back from Jersey and Connecticut, and they've had it up to their eyeballs with mm -hmm. contact. Wow. So Texas get all of the leftover anger from Connecticut and NJMP. Mm -hmm. So we kind of went, it's retribution time. And I have to be blunt. We've got plans. I I may I may be bringing you a, a bribe that is specifically aimed at this. It will be fantastic. <laughs> well, there you, uh, go. You, you, might, you might end up having lots of folks do yoga. <laughs> you, you might wow. Oh, that's right. I did see that. You, yeah, uh, so like, you might not I, see some I of our teams remember, get off the I, floor. I do remember seeing an episode where everybody was doing yoga. 
Yeah, no. So we might, if you get any contact, we might also have a Zen meditation zone for the entire team, or we might also do rather condescending things going, a taxi driver's better than you. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, but we've been workshopping it for some months because uh, we, we want to go back to having fun at MSR Houston and not getting yelled at for mild rubbing. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I get yeah. you. I get you. There's always the philosophy that if it's a penalty for contact, that your car must get bigger. I like that one. My my core philosophy so far as a judge has been help the driver get better, right? Mm -hmm. But the lemons, second time. Well, and Lemons is interesting because, you know, what narrative is? Is it man versus self? Is it man versus another man? Is it man versus machine? If you ask me, it's a mix of them all, right? Usually it's man Track. versus self in their concepts, um, if you ask me. And I feel in that way, you know, on Saturdays, we're very relaxed. Penalties mm -hmm. are going to be contemplative. We're going to make you think about it. We're going to talk you through it. We are already planning to kill you with calmness at NJMP. And then someday we're going to get embarrassing and we're going to get more and more embarrassing. And it'll just get more and more embarrassing because if you can't learn Saturday, Sunday. See, I'm, I'm not, and, and to take this in the, the way that it is meant, I'm not rooting against you. You won't make it till Sunday. Sunday. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm just, you know, oh, 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 I know there, there oh. will be, we just won't do shame. They'll just be time eaters on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Like you will, you will complete the following mantras, and then you will also organize these piston rods into a Zen garden that is pleasing for me to gaze upon. I have, and, a, I have a time eater that I've been working on for years. Could be fantastic. Huh? Don't worry. Okay, I, I'm all. Ears. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. Don't worry. It's, it's. Mm -hmm. it's I got to show it to you because we. It's, going to involve a little bit okay so your upcoming judging schedules you're going to be doing njmp are you going to be doing thompson as well or no no i'll be doing uh hpr 24 okay i'm pretty i'm pretty durable and moderately even keeled uh at least personally i i put on a bit of a show as a judge obviously yeah um and then october starts uh, well september is going to be a hard push to finish up our awful changes to our car october i have to take two weeks because houston to road america is not quick it's, and, it's just north just go north yeah, just, just keep going north until you know part of my duramax decides to stop duramaxing probably that'll well, be I mean, what's it one day to get out of texas yeah, easy yeah. I, i'll be in uh hot springs first day okay. First day is going to be a 10-hour tow, and I'll be in Hot Springs. And okay. then um, after that, we've got MSR, which is our home track. And then we'll be pushing – I might push us to Road Atlanta. The other thing is Frank and his lovely uh, wife, Haley, are having their first child next month. So I'm also running a lot of the logistics and driving and trailering for the race team. Mm. So I didn't want to – um back to back race and judge it felt a little conflict mm -hmm. interesty so mm -hmm. usually i take we take the summers off because it's hot in texas and they don't do a ton of golf races no um and then we'll uh so i'll judge during that time period and also i kind of wanted to get into the swing of it and see and it's amazing watching the machinery that you know kim keeps a close eye on at lemons just operate so smoothly She's so, always sitting in the corner, kind of quiet, but, you know, everything is being taken care of. Very well. Mm -hmm. Very well. Yep. Don't let those striped socks fool you. No. <laughs> She's the <laughs> boss, at least, of uh, the penalty box. Um, but it's 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 only two more races this year for me to judge. I might pick up a couple of arrive and drives, too, since I just have racing and business and, you know, other little things going on. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll see. I don't know if we're going to push for Road Atlanta in the dark, though. That's that's a hard maybe. Yeah. I might end up judging it instead if there's a need. We've only got, it, got down there once, and it was like snow rain the entire weekend. That kind of... Oh, it was pretty miserable. It was cold. 
That was the, that was the year when they had the um they had a windstorm come through and all the canopy tents just all ended up in a pile. They just went around that morning and just grabbed them all, threw them in a big pile. Oh yeah, no, that's that's a favorite of mine. I've had that at NOLA. Oh, mm -hmm. I've got a great NOLA story speaking of weather. No, this is a great one. This is how you uh, know I'm from the South, all right? Uh-huh. So first when we first started racing, the way we would stay at the track is, is truly trashy. We mm -hmm. would set up a cot and just sleep next to the car. No tents, none of that. You know, and like beer cans littered about, like, you know, real children. We finally decided to get some tents. And one year down at NOLA, there's a big tornado watch and all that jazz. And my wife are staying in a tent that's like vaguely strapped down to our flatbed trailer at the time. So, you know, what do we do? Poke our heads out of the tent, and look for the tornado. Yeah. And you know, oh, it's yeah. green sky and it's tornado season. It's got that silence and our phones are blaring. So we're like, oh, where's the tornado? And then <laughs> finally, Carrie, my wife goes, you know, we've got a big, heavy diesel truck we should go hide in. And I go, you know, that's a really good idea. That mm. That's probably better. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the same race that I learned that a Silverado Duramax heater can be a clothing dryer in a pinch. Right. Not good yeah. idea. Yeah. Oh, the drawing was necessary. The staring for the tornado just means I'm from the South and going, where is it? <laughs> like I can see it at the racetrack at 2 a.m. But No problem. It's easy. It's, yeah, it's, just... it's got, you've seen it on TV. They, they all right. look like it's that. It's funny. On Twister. Exactly. Right. Which fun. they didn't have a Twister theme at Hallett. I mean, really? Really? I think they were finally happy to have the, the, a crossover so they could actually hold the lemons race they'll, they'll oh, learn no, it was it was i i am torn as to whether i will judge that or race that next year yeah i'm i'm a little bitter i had to uh drop out of the one lap of america and did not get to race it so i'm slightly it was very sad slightly sad well it'd come next year you know lemons lemons will attract that good that well run that fun They'll go even if it goes down next year, but I think Hallett deserves to have the car count go up next year. It mm -hmm. really does. It makes ECR look kind of the Dallas race we used to do, kind of, I don't know, not fun. Hallett just feels so genuine and silly. <laughs> well, all right, now you're luring us to go for a big, long toe, and I've done that drive from here. It's no fun. Oh, toes are fun. Come on. Mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> So have you thought about racing in other series? I've raced in the SCCA and I've raced in the um, World Racing League and Escape Velocity Racing just picked up what we call EVR East. Um, some of the leftover Knox Vegas low ballers, uh, Dr. Dr. Rob and my old office manager, uh, now Jen Simpson, um, joined up with us. And they, they swear by Lucky Dog. Yep. Our big thing is... We just like garbage cars, so we like engineering problems. And yeah, a 1964 Dodge Dart, even with everything we've done to this one, is not going to be competitive at those other series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That's true. And I don't feel like building, you know, a 16 valve 944. I don't. I don't feel like doing any of that. Um, all of my big dumb builds or other things. And if I wanted to race, race, I'll do courting. I would I would get something that's tight and cheap and would also help uh I'm Uncle Bob would also help my nephews. Mm. Right. Um, including Frank's kid and some other nephews I have to get into racing. Sure. So that's that's kind of the goal if I want to get serious. Um at the same time, my wife is dying to build a gambler car. My wife wants to go rally racing, which is very silly in Texas because everything's flat and full of cow patties. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Um, I think that would be on the short list of we build a car for it. We kind of got a free 280ZX that's mostly intact. And every now and again, she's like, oh, I want to, you know, Safari build it. I'm like, great, you're competent. The tools are outside. Go for it. <laughs> oh, you know, there's oh, this. I've got to fix so many other things. <laughs> there's yeah. this rally. I don't want another. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that. <laughs> There's this rally in Alaska that I know about that um, might sound like something fun for her. 
yeah, yeah, we just have to get up there, but you know, so it's just north. It again, you just drive until the transmission wants to stop working, and Canadian Customs wants to ask questions like, "Why do you have Texas plates?" and "No, you can't drink beer and have an AR-15 in this nation <laughs> at the same time." Um, but being I was going to say, the the beer part's a definite false on that one. <laughs> oh no, you have all the beer you want, in Canada and Oklahoma, at least Oklahoma ten years ago. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's it, it's interesting thinking about other series. I do love racing, but at the end of the day, for me, Lemons is more the people I know, mm-hmm. right? Um, I've never been particularly athletic. Statue, I, I'm statue wise, I'm six foot three. I, you know, my heaviest, I weigh three hundred ten pounds. These days, I'm about two sixty. Um, I've got decent hand-eye coordination, but I'm a lawyer for a living. I sit in this exact chair 60 hours a week. Mm. I push to go to the gym. That's why I do yoga with Sajeev. We keep each other honest about it. Mm-hmm. That's why I used to cart. But even after three stints in a rental cart, I hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, do I want to? Yes. Especially I had surgery earlier this year on my uh, intestines. Whole different story. Is that a goal long term? Yes. Is that one of the reasons the Dart has fuel injection in the turbocharger and is about to get a different sort of transmission? Yes, just to really annoy someone in a you know Miata. Mm-hmm. But it's in the future for now. That sounds mm-hmm. like a plan. So, with your uh, decade plus experience and uh, judging experience, we have three questions that we need your opinion on: favorite penalties. Favorite bribes and favorite tracks so far. Mm. Captain's log supplemental. Miss Vicky, we've been racing for a while. Yep. One of the things you've wanted forever and ever was something simple and easy to get the video because you've not been happy with everything we've tried. Nope. And we've tried a lot. Well, the issue that we've always had was that we always never got around to video. We kept trying, but well, things kept happening. Did, even when we did, I can't count the number of times I have GoPro video from Jennifer turned into the GoPro on to get out of the car and then turning it off to get into the car and start racing. I mean, you know, we've all done it. That w- that was a problem with the GoPro is, is because of the positioning is that we could never really see the on and off button and the battery was really short. But I so, think we found a I think we found a solution. I think we did. I did. So we now have the Sentinel system. Yes. And long, oh my gosh. Rumored finally here. I know. And honestly, it, it was it was incredible. Just, just, like my mind was blown sitting there watching, you know, my sister drive or watch our friends drive in the car. It mm-hmm. it was really cool. Mm-hmm. We got to have it displayed at the track in the paddock. We were watching it pretty much. Mm -hmm. I will say that the only downside to the Sentinel system is it cuts down on my steps because I end up staring at the camera. This is true. Instead of walking around the paddock. (laughs) But I I guess I'll get my exercise in another way. So just wait until we get it integrated with the AIM system. And then we have all the telemetry. That'll be fantastic. Right. Right. So right now it shows uh, you can put your logos on it. It -hmm. determines who's in the car. It has speed and it has video. And yep, obviously you could put more cameras to it. But what I liked about it the most was that all you have to do is put the box in. And I mean, you can leave it in your car, obviously, but it's it's ready to go. You know, yeah. you know, we had to do it the second race. What? Put in a memory stick. Yeah. The and memory start. stick. Yes. And the memory and start stick. The car. That's right. And That's it. it the video was clear. It was crisp and it was just it was just amazing that we had that length of time to, on stick on video because normally before we would only have these little pin shots of, you know, 15, 20 minutes right yeah. before the battery would die or it would turn itself off or, or we would for, or we would forget to turn it off <laughs> and we would have just nothing happening or, turn um, it, or get off on our on and off and have it turn off when we need it on and on yeah and but this off. this was a steady video for hours and it was it was really cool i loved it 
I really did. Well, I'm glad you're happy because mm -hmm. as with every married couple, when you're happy, I'm happy. And uh, <laughs> I don't sleep in a tub for, you know, another reason that I didn't even do it, but that's fine. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're going to use it over and over and over. We got another Absolutely. upcoming race. It'll be fantastic. And they're posting it on our YouTube channel. If people want to get bored, it's a great way to fall asleep. You are so self-deprivating. <laughs> I'm, I'm even better when I'm self-deprecating. Deprecating. That too. Favorite penalties, favorite bribes, and favorite tracks so far. Mm. Let's start with penalties. Sure. I am very much a fan of, well... We haven't had many penalties as a team, right? So as a driver, escape velocity racing would usually only, you know, get at most three flags in a day, and it would be one flag per driver. The only penalty that we hella but earned was a 24-hour race, and my team partner, Frank, used to be the black flag king. Like, he couldn't go out in a stint and not get at least one black flag. Mm -hmm. Granted, this was the car he drove in high school. So he knew how to drive it, this 64 Dodge Dart, right? We were all 17 and stupid in our first car, I'm sure, in the Lemons Paddock. So this man knows what to do with this car. It just doesn't always translate because he doesn't stay ahead of it sometimes. Now I'm now we're kind of tied for black flags, but yeah. we had the blood goat. So the down at Motorsports Ranch Houston and some of the golf races, they used to have a welder who would come by. And when you got your second or third flag and they felt like you needed some shame, they would have this welder weld on various animal silhouettes on mm -hmm. the roof of the car. Oh, Jesus. So um, Frank had hella butt earned a black flag late at night in a 24-hour race. And... Phil, maybe McDaniels, I forget. Someone went, okay, you just need to chill out, and you're going to go well to go to the roof of your car, and you're going to go take a nap. Yeah. So that's what happened. And then we had, I don't know, again, alcohol got involved. We ended up painting it red, but glitter paint red. Okay. Oh, and then, because our theme is vaguely Apollo, vaguely NASA being from Houston, Frank being an aerospace engineer and me being a big old nerd, we decided that this goat was part of this blood sacrifice ritual that the German engineers did when they first came over here to, in fact, make the first American rockets fly. And then this blood goat is now on top of our car. But for us, it's a curse. And what's so funny about this story, right? Because we'll have a couple drinks and tell the story however way we wanted to it that evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we finally win Class C in the dark. We do it up at HPR, which is a great race to go win something for speed because all the cars are hilariously bad. So on the way home from HPR, after finally winning Class C, the blood goat starts going left and right and left and right. And it starts oscillating faster and faster and <laughs> flies off the top of the roof of the car, flinging into a field in Colorado an hour outside of Denver to lay there forever, ending the curse of the blood goat. Or yeah. um, I, I've thought about bringing that one back. I just don't have a CNC cutter to make that many barnyard animals. And honestly, I would probably make them too lewd and Jay would yell at me. More mm. than <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like that one. Uh, favorite track. That's tough. Um, it would have to be Sebring. But not be, well, for two reasons. One is because turn 17 is awful. Mm -hmm. That turn is garbage, and I love how bad it is. Mm -hmm. like, you know, vaunted track, high-value track, very important track, hard-to-get-to track. Yeah, it's garbage. Turn 17 is just bad. I mm -hmm. love it. Um, two, it's bad. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the, even the dart, we keep a lot of compliance in that suspension. It is, it is a little wild and woolly going through there. Mm -hmm. Um. The other thing is the hotel next to the track at Sebring mm -hmm. does not care. 
they know exactly where their bread is buttered. So you want to show up and you want to party your brains out. You want to open up a giant tab at the bar and you want to use the pool after hours and you want to maybe shoot some fireworks off from a balcony on July 4th. They don't care. <laughs> totally fine with it. They really do not care. So the after parties at Sebring are insane. Mm -hmm. they're, they're rock and roll level things. We don't damage things, obviously. Lemons actually genuinely cares about the world around it. That's one of the reasons we do it. There's a lot of compassion and empathy for auto racing. I think that's a core of Lemons. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can get wild. Um, that has to be my favorite track. But MSR being my home track is special. The block party at CMP is great. HPR has an amazing party on a Saturday night when it's not a full 24. It's beautiful at HPR. Um, but Sebring simply because the best stories happen there. Mm -hmm. and that's where Dr. Dr. Rob and Jen met, in fact. And we later married them at NOLA. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, in fact, Ooh. the minister for that. I was the wedding minister. So, you know. Um, pretty, pretty Sebring. I'll say Sebring, but just okay. Just. <laughs> and uh, bribe wise, oh, I'm easy whiskey. Um, best bribe I've ever given is to Sajeev. There used to be an antique store in Houston that had all of these old Ford like service manuals, but like the little updates and the little mm -hmm. chassis electrical for all these 80s, 90s Fords. So I went out by, you know, a few at a time and then we'll go through a race and I'll just drop it off. And before I was a judge, I got so over bribing, right? I, I, I don't like a lot of waste. It, mm -hmm. it kind of me. So I just got to the point that I'd give him 20 bucks. I'd be like, here's 20 bucks. It's a proper bribe. I'm a lawyer. It's hilarious. Sometimes the judge would take it. Other times they'll donate it. I don't care. It's 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I can say that if you know your judge, like Neil being a radio host or me being a whiskey aficionado or cigar aficionado, you know, get them something they like. If you don't know, honestly, a donation to something, right, mm -hmm. instead of more crap. Like, I don't need another bag of Bucky's Nuggets. I don't like Bucky's Nuggets. I'm okay. sorry, y'all. What the heck is Bucky's Nuggets? Oh, man. <laughs> Imagine really weird corn puffs or corn pops. <laughs> they're, they're very sweet. You know, people think, oh, my gosh, I'm finally going to a Bucky's. And I'm like, bro, I have to drive to San Antonio every other week. I don't want to stop at Bucky's anymore. I just go because the gas is cheap. But that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. A good bottle of whiskey or a donation to a charity, that will almost always play. Mm -hmm. That will almost always play. Um, not all judges drink. Not all judges drink like Judge Bob drinks. Uh, but, you know, a donation to a charity will always be happy. Mm -hmm. Always. And for beer sure. for the corn workers. Mm -hmm. Always good. What uh, What cars or themes that you've seen stand out in your history involved with in being involved with lemons? Mm. That's a very good question. I am always a big fan of moderately boring vehicles doing well in an auto race. Mm -hmm. So one, and really for me, it's a kind of about the team involved. So, and it's been Toyotas as of late. So when I did Barber, there was this hilarious Toyota Tercel family team, a dad, a son, and the son's girlfriend. And I always mm -hmm. love it when the boy brings their girlfriend, right? Because I can immediately tell one or two things about the team there. Either A, I've got a mildly toxic misogynist and I don't like you, or B, you know she's probably smarter than you anyways and you're willing to get over it. Right. So when I see that out of a gate and it's like some beater Toyota, some Ford Tempo, some garbage like that, your theme can basically be, I painted it pink. Hooray. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's missed the most about themes is they have very little to do with what's on the car at a certain point, right? Because a car is car shaped especially to someone who is from Houston, 
where you will see a giant skull on fire driving between breweries on a Saturday because art cars are a thing here. You right. can't do that on Lemon's track. It's all about the performance art. It's 110% about the performance art. So the themes that stand out are the ones that come up with a shtick, and that shtick is fun for everyone, and that shtick is positive in a sense, mm -hmm. and that shtick is easy to kind of keep doing. Um, and the cars really, as long as it's normal, the sort of thing you go, oh, I race cars. You know, you're like, I race cars. Oh, what do you race? Well, I race a BMW, says everyone. No, okay, good. I mean, that's fine. I get it. I'm very dear friends with Tetanus. I know why they've got that E30 that's dominating the Gulf. But mm -hmm. still, but if I say at a bar, oh, I race cars. What do you race? A 1964 Dodge Dart with a slant six, push button automatic and four doors. People are like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, well, I'm just cooler than you. <laughs> right? So I, I want something that makes no sense as a race car. I'm very sad people aren't piling on with Hyundai Santa Fe's and other things like that. Bring me these garbage Korean crossovers, right? If you want to go buy a brand new Santa Fe and put a cage in it, leave the interior in it, except for a race seat, bring mm -hmm. it. I probably won't even give you any penalty laps. <laughs> won't finish <Probably>. anyway. Live. <laughs> exactly. But go for it. You know, make it happen if you want to waste your money that way. That's hilarious. So, That's hilarious. <laughs> um, I also like, I, I enjoy trucks. Uh, some trucks can do very well. Some trucks I've seen a lot of money spent on not do very well. Mm -hmm. I also enjoy older cars and weird cars, right? Like a Fiat. Um Obviously, I like old cars. I race a 41 olds when it's not mostly broken again. So yeah, bring me bring me things that have no right to be on a racetrack and race them well. An Avalon. The Toyota team out of I think Tennessee has an Avalon that mm -hmm. really can pass. That's hilarious. Yeah. We were we were right down that line until you said and race them well, because that would have been our team. But oh well. Um so Two-part question. What's your favorite lemon story? And what's Ooh. the most misunderstood thing about lemons? Man, after 10 years, what's my favorite lemon story? One that comes to mind. Oof. Could change the next time you come on because we're only doing a, a short episode with you. That's mm -hmm. fine. Um, you know, it's my first heroic fix with uh, our team we had a team member by the name of greg and he was a big mopar guy and a decent collector and another engineer and he had like a real 1970 dodge challenger like original barn fine patina whole nine and he drove it to the track as you like to do with your matching car. numbers Ma yeah matching numbers slant six all mm -hmm. that uh, so, yeah, but there's only 80 816 of them made with that color and uh with the black vinyl top and you know yeah. he didn't care about any of that and mm -hmm. we we windowed the block on the dark and it's a slant six so we're hanging out and um we're like hey greg i see you got a slant six in there he's like yeah pull it i got a 340 waiting to go in it so we pull the slant six out done and we, we start dropping it into our uh dodge dart and of <laughs> course you know i think this is maybe three years into it the only person who knows anything about slant sixes in depth is frank i just kind of have general car knowledge and mainly more modern cars so we're we're struggling we're fighting we're arguing with it we keep telling everyone it's 30 minutes away from starting it became a joke around the paddock everything's 30 minutes away like fusions 10 years away same concept right um and then it starts raining msr doesn't have real covers they have like hollanders that mm -hmm. take little rain big raindrops and make them dispersed cold rain so we finally get the motor in after anton and i'm sure you've heard about anton but he's yep. magic right he he somehow figures out a way to have a thing machined that we need to make sure this crankshaft goes onto this torque converter through this flex plate magic it's about 3 a.m and and god bless my exceedingly patient wife she's like okay you all need to stop and we agree 
we can't find a hotel. So her, <laughs> myself, Frank, and another teammate end up going to a place called the Sherodal or the Share Hotel. I, I don't know. And at like 3.30, three, like we're all six foot plus, we're all 200 pounds plus, And my wife is like five foot four and furious. Um, we're all standing behind her at the check-in counter at this like hot sheet motel at 3.30 in the morning going, ha, ah, we need a hotel room for the night, but we just need one. <laughs> and then it wasn't until the next morning when we woke up about 7.15, we realized what a uh, vignette of humanity we must have been at that mm-hmm. point. We get to the racetrack, we put the race car back together, we put it on track, and we win our first heroic fix. That was the first of three or four. It turns out that was the worst part of our addiction. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, we've won too many heroic fixes. They, they won't even give it to us anymore. They'll, they'll find anything else to give us now if we've done something cool. Oh, wow. Um, what is the most misunderstood thing about lemons? Hmm. You know, for new teams, that it matters or what matters, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. At at NOLA, there's a great brand new team. I think they're from Florida State or something, and they had that black C4 Corvette, the 4 plus 3, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All undergrads, and and, um, they were having some feelings, let's say, and there was a lot of misplaced machismo and i know and you don't well you don't know and i do and i'm yeah. happy and i'm racing this race but sajeev is judging it and i i've been there right when i said it we committed all the sins as a new team this might have been one of them and um i think i spent the next two or three hours going i don't care if a machine shop rebuilt your brake calipers i can tell you they're not working right by looking at your rotor pull it apart and I'll show you how I know that. And we do. So I teach them how to rebuild their brakes. Right. This whole time they're like hyper-focused on tires, this timing, that all this shit that has nothing to do with anything. Cause if you don't have good brakes that don't bind up, it doesn't matter. So we do that. And then the next day they're, they're tired, but you know, they tried to keep up with me and a handle of scotch after we threw our 10 year anniversary party. Good luck. Um, and they're like, what do we do? The car is not running right. And I go, so put it out there. No one cares. I've raced a 41 Oldsmobile with drum brakes, no self adjusters and no shocks. Go do it. Go get Mm -hmm. the track time. See what actually breaks. This is a piece of crap. Go break it. And they're a little soft. So I, Anton's hanging out by us racing our car. I'm like, Anton, go jump in their Corvette and tell them it's fine. He does. He puts some duct tape over one part of the intake and now it runs better. You know, they're, they're so focused on being fast and winning that they miss the core thing. Have fun. Stay on track. That's right. Exactly. No, okay. that's no, that's absolutely true. Right, it, it's it's not about you know, sometimes it's not about winning. It's not about getting out there and, you know, racing this person next to you. It's about racing the track and having a good time. And if you if you have fun and you go out there, you will find something to race. It may be yourself. It may be the line. It may be you, in fact, are in a BMW 3 Series and somehow you're getting freight trained by a Slant 6 Dodge Dart that can also take a corner better than you. <laughs> you a million things. But you're not going to know until you get out there. And what Lemons lets you do is have fun while doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You Mm -hmm. don't have to have a perfectly tuned machine. In fact, we'll kind of prefer if you just had something safe and silly. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing you should never try and race is somebody else's tire that has left the building and now they are tripoding because those things are fast. (laughs) The fastest thing I've seen. There was a man at NOLA this year. There was a Saab that was in the lead of B. And they took a couple laps without one of their wheels on to the point where everyone went, okay, you can stop now. You're done. I know there's 45 minutes left, but it's over. Off track with you. Yes, indeed. Miss Vicky? Why should people race lemons? Masochism? No, sorry. No, wait. What is them? Why should people race lemons? (laughs) Lemons? No, the people. Because of... Right. At the end of the day, 
what you what you get from lemons is not only well here not only a sort of network i have on my desk at work um a sticker of neil losey and a sticker of anton lovett i don't know what to do with them i value the stickers so much i just leave them on my work desk <laughs> but you get friends like i'm dear friends with dr harris and chris we've visited them in aspen multiple times rob and jen got married through lemons mm -hmm. listen in, in this in this stupid modern distant digital social media driven world where it's all about i bought a new corvette i'm the best i'm the greatest look at me on instagram and all this mm -hmm. divisiveness lemons is one of the few places where you can go and you can make real friendships because the core of a good friendship is you struggle to achieve a goal with someone else in your life and you enjoy it mm -hmm. the core of a good friendship isn't getting brunch on a sunday morning every other sunday i mean that's important catching up but we call them old friends these aren't the right. sort of people you call and struggle with these aren't the sort of people you call family in lemons you make real friendships and you learn a whole set of interesting skills it's good networking but at the end of the day it's friendship right that's why indeed good answer if you don't want friends don't race lemons pretty true race yeah. people are awesome people <laughs> you don't want friends don't race lemons so sir this is the uh, conclusion of the judge series, judge interview. Uh, we will grab you for a, uh, a longer, more in-depth and detailed podcast I, I episode. Uh, we we didn't want to throw Frank in on it because we, we tend to have a pretty bad Laurel and Hardy shtick to boot. <laughs> Sold. Is he free? <laughs> we'll do it right now. Um, <laughs> if people want to keep up with you guys, uh, if you're posting anywhere, is there any way to follow the team? Facebook, and... Escape Velocity Racing is where we do most of our posting. We're trying to get our Instagram and our Twitter going, mainly to make fun of Lemon's Instagram and Twitter. Um, but Escape Velocity Racing on Facebook, you'll see us there. I'm Bob Griffin on Facebook. Uh, and the, you'll follow all that there and you know, see what we're up to. And obviously follow the 24 hours of lemons on Facebook, Instagram. And I think they have a Twitter. If not, I'm going to have the fake one just to annoy Jay for about a week. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll get a yellow check mark from Elon Musk or something. I don't know. That could be worth it. That could be worth it all by itself. Well, uh, we will be seeing you at NJMP and uh, thank you for coming on and kicking off our judge series. No yep. worries. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'll see you at NJMP. Don't get any content. We will not. We do not. Thank you, sir. <laughs>